Welcome back. So continuing on with our discussion of ASTs. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and break everything. Woo. I'm going to delete everything that has to do with injecting C Sharp into our grammar file. Because we are now going to be focusing on getting this grammar file to produce an AST rather than performing the actions uh, that are going to result in parse JSON. So I'm going to start nuking our headers and members. We no longer need this action. We don't need any of these actions. Um, we're going to nuke these for now. Those were just for dem I mean, they're going to be, they're going to look pretty much the same once we get back to it. But I just want to strip our um, entire grammar file down to the absolute bare minimum. Okay. And from there, we'll go about actually getting everything to work. So nuke and stuff, nuke and stuff, nuke and more stuff, adding something I accidentally didn't intend to nuke. Um, doing that, doing that, maybe going to reformat this a little bit better now that we don't have any actions. Uh, let's go ahead and nuke all these guys. We don't need them anymore. Um, and we don't need that. And let's go ahead and save out. Do we get any compile errors? We do not. So, yeah. This is our grammar file. Very cool. And it's just a grammar file, and it's going to result in an AST that we can later parse. So, let's talk about how we're going to deal with some of these rules. Starting at the file rule, we're really fine with the file rule. The file rule is such a high-level rule that we don't need to do any sort of rewriting. We want the literal tree returned by the value rule um, to be the result of the file rule. When we go into the value rule, we're just going to let each one of these rules decide how their tree looks too. We're, we're going to just pass it on. Again, if you do not supply the rewrite syntax that follows the, the arrow, it will default to how it normally handles creating the tree, which is just to dump every token that one of these rules matches into the tree. But again, value is a high-level rule. We don't necessarily have any tokens that we can even uh, use at this point. So now let's talk about the object rule. Now, I'm going to actually refactor this rule a little bit because it is slightly broken. Do you see the problem with this, Jason? I no, not right off. I, I realized my mistake uh, uh, later after the last or after the video series that we completed this. Um, if it's a string, it's actually going to have um, because you can put string literals in JSON files mm -hmm. um, or strings in JSON files as key properties. So it's going to be something like uh, you know, hey there equals ten. Well, the way that my grammar file is currently set up, it'll parse this entire hey there out, mm. including the quotes. Gotcha. So we're going to refactor this rule a little bit. We no longer need the key. We're just going to do ident or string followed by this. And then we're going to supply our first set of... Nelson? Real rewrite rules here. Yeah, we lost, internet. Note, we lost internet connection for just a second, just letting you know. We're good, though. Ah, okay. So let's go ahead and insert our first uh, rules. This rule is going to be very straightforward. It's going to go ahead and... Now remember, actually, why am I starting there? I should start with here. And this rewrite rule is even going to be simpler. We're just going to say, start a new parent, start a new hierarchy, pass in the object token and the object property rule. Now, the reasons I'm doing this sort of stuff might seem a little bit arbitrary because it does take a while to get a feel for how you should format your AST. So you might want to come back to this video after watching the next video when we actually consume the AST. But I did think about how the AST should look so that our actual tree grammar or the grammar that's responsible for parsing out the AST is as coherent as possible. Right. We want to remove as – we want to take – all the tokens, all the extraneous tokens, like those commas and curlies, and we want to convert them into tokens that have meaning, that mm -hmm. are easy to latch onto, easy to parse, easy to understand. So that's what we're doing here. We're saying start a new hierarchy, give it the object token, which we can immediately latch on, which, remember, the object token isn't a real token, at least as far as Alexa is concerned. It's just an empty thing that we can insert whenever we want. 
And then follow, following that, go ahead and dump out all of the object properties. Now this star syntax here is actually the opposite of what this star syntax means. This star syntax means print zero to many object properties into this tree. It doesn't mean match zero to one items. So it's a very interesting little uh, difference in how the syntax works. But what this is going to do is this is going to have the object as a new hierarchy followed by object properties. Okay. Now an object property is going to look like this. I'm going to go ahead and add the fake property token. Now we have the first problem with our approach. First problem is, is we no longer have the ident or the string. We have the value and we have this fake property token, but we don't have the ident token or the string token, so we don't know what property this is setting. We're losing information with this, uh, with this syntax. But what I want to do actually is I want to take the result of the ident string or the text inside the ident string, and I want to dump it into this new um, this new token I just created. And I want to take the text of this string token, of course, minus the, um, the quotes, and I want to dump it into the text of this token. So I'm basically taking these two tokens and I'm turning, I'm putting them into one, basically, so that our tree grammar doesn't have to understand the difference between an ident or a string. Because really, the only reason we have that difference here is so that we can actually successfully parse that data. Once we parsed it, we just care that it's a property, not that it came from an identifier or a string. Now, the way that we do that is with the following syntax. The brackets on a token invoke the token constructor. The token constructor can optionally take in a token or a token and some text. And the text that you pass into the token constructor will replace the token's text from, what's, from what it's instantiated from. So for example, this property token is not gonna have any text because we instantiated the token, but we didn't actually put any text in it. This property token, however, is going to have the text of the ident token. And you see how I use the, uh, the money sign right there to, uh, to reference that token from inside of this constructor. Because this constructor is actually tr uh, completely true C-sharp code, which we'll see in a second. Now, in addition, this is a very this is another very important thing. In addition to the property token having the text of the ident token, it also has the exact same location information. Now, every token not only has text, but it also knows where it is in the code file, uh, which makes uh, error messages possible because you can always look at, okay, where was that error? And then what token was it on? Okay, what line of code was that token on? You want to keep that information persistent throughout the process of compiling your program. Otherwise, your error messages will not have, well, line numbers in them. So by actually instantiating the property token in terms of the identifier token, we are making the property token have the same location information as the identifier token. Okay, so for the next, for the next alternative, remember this is one alternative. When this rule executes, it's either going to be this code or it's going to be this code. So for the next alternative, it's going to be a bit more complex. Any guess as to what follows this? Nope. What we're doing here is we're instanti- remember how I said that this is valid C-sharp code? We're instantiating this property token and we're setting the text to um, this, when this expression will result in the quotation marks being chopped out of the string tokens text. Gotcha. So now we've normalized two different alternatives into one single token, just making it even easier for us to parse that later down the line. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about arrays now. Arrays are going to be very straightforward. They're even going to be a lot easier than these uh, than an object because all we have to do is say, start a new hierarchy, give it the fake array token, and then give it zero to many values. This is literally all we have to do. 
There is one thing that I would like to do, however. I would like for this begin token, I want the array token that we instantiate to have the exact same location information uh, and debug information as this token right here. And although this is a character literal, it still is a token. So I can say S equals to give it a name. And then I can say instantiate the array token, but go ahead and give it the location information of the S token that we just aliased out on line 30. So now our array token, our fake array token that we just instantiated to use in our tree, now has some context information that'll make it easier to debug later or display error messages to the user. Okay, so now we have all of that. Um, the last thing we really need to deal with is going to be the literals. Because remember, we so far we've been writing things in term of, terms of values, and a value can be an object, an array, or a literal. Our literals, uh, they'll work. I mean, I, I guess that'll work. It'll work just fine. We can still use this, but it's going to be kind of gnarly. Um, we want to make. We want to do a little bit better than this. We want to make the the uh, tree grammar have to work as less as possible. So, what we're going to do is first we're going to translate this string token. We're going to leave the number token alone. Number token, one hundred percent fine. Has all this sent all the semantic meaning that we could possibly hope for with given a number. String though, we want to do something cool to it. We want to go ahead and say a string is going to turn into a string, but... We need to strip out those quotes. Yep. And the true and false, we're going to do something fun with those too. We're going to make a boolean um, uh, token, and we're going to say the true token turns into a bool with the true token's location information and the text of true, and false is going to turn into a bool with that information. And I do have a error somewhere. Um, an error on line zero, according to... I'm just looking at the dollar true. Uh, where did I... Oh. Thank you. Oh. Okay. It makes me... <laughs> there we go. We got a uh, successful compilation now. Okay, so before we head off into the next video, I'm going to go ahead and see what we just did. Besides uh, calling it, yeah. Of course, uh, now this line no longer executes because remember the builder was a member mm -hmm. added to the grammar and we deleted that. So for now, we're just going to return null. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> okay, let's look at our, our, our awesome tree. Check that out. So we now have a hierarchy of everything. Nice. And if we go ahead and inspect it, you can see the hierarchy right here. So we have the hey property followed by an array. Now notice the, uh, the array is using the open bracket. Although it is showing the text of the open bracket, it's not actually an open bracket token. It's an array token. Mm -hmm. The array has the number one, the number two, and another object. The object has a property of woe. The woe has an array inside of it, and the array has all these values inside of it. So we have a nice tree representation. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Very cool. Looks like our timing was perfect there because, yeah. Nelson, you got cut off for just a second again. What would you say? <laughs> oh, I said, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that was simple enough. All right, so that's going to wrap things up for this video, and we will catch you guys in the next. Thanks a lot.